value of the underlying asset, and I've said it's the size, another way of thinking about it is it's the size of the pie. Imagine the business as a pie before it is divided up between banks and shareholders. It's that underlying business value. Enterprise value, debt free, cash free, very similar. Now, I normally have one lawyer, I did on my last course, who says, but Mark, I'm sure there's a difference, a slight difference between enterprise value and debt free, cash free value. Well, I'm telling you, think about them as being the same. We're at Linklater's today, think about them as being the same. They're both terms that bankers use to describe the underlying business value. You would have to have studied finance or be vaguely interested in this stuff. Yeah, to... Oh, that's good. All right. Does anybody think they know what the difference is between enterprise value and debt free cash free value? There is a subtle difference between the two. Does anybody think they know? Heard this before? Done a finance course? So, okay. Let me tell you, I'm going to keep it very simple. Somebody thought they had goodwill? No, it's nothing to do with goodwill. Um, the difference between the two is that enterprise value, by the way, there is an exam question on this one, enterprise value would normally include, come on, just a few more liabilities. A few more liabilities. So here we go, from going from left to right, uh, a banker might come up with their enterprise value, as well as subtracting the net debt, they might subtract a few other liabilities, a few extra liabilities that look a bit like debt. And I had a banker, no it wasn't a banker, it was a lawyer from Austria, uh, who's used to dealing with these investment bankers, and he was, he was saying that they go from enterprise value to what the, the seller gets, and he was saying, Mark, they subtract <coughs> a few other things, a few other liabilities. Going from left to right, they subtract a few more things than just net debt. Can anyone give me an example, maybe based on your experience, of other things that an investment banker, schooled in valuation, might try to subtract? What other liabilities look a bit like debt that somebody might subtract, go from offer to legal agreement? Any idea? We're thinking about liabilities that look like debt. Shareholders loans? Yes. Anything else? The amounts related to lawsuits where you can be... Yeah, so what we're thinking is that we've got some contingent liabilities perhaps, and we might want to... So what we're thinking is, our argument is, if I wanted to clear those liabilities, I have to take out a loan from the bank. So you're absolutely right. Those are some practical examples of things you might subtract. Any other, any other liabilities? They, these are things that look a bit like debt, or yeah. might have to be funded through debt. Guarantees that a company is rented. Possibly, possibly. I'll give you a few others. Pension liabilities, is this a problem in Portugal? No. Pension, defined benefit pension schemes. Do not, you have this problem in Portugal? Not as a rule. Not as a rule, okay, all right. So in other parts of Europe, definitely, definitely we have that problem. So pension liabilities. Things called provisions, it's an accounting term, provisions. Can anybody tell me what a provision is? This is, this is not supposed to be a strict accounting uh, lecture, but what's, can anybody, does anybody know what a provision is? It's an, an amount that you have on, the, on your accountability for contingencies that you have already added. Yeah, exactly. So if you, if you thought you were going to restructure your, a, a plant, you might have a liability on the balance sheet which represents the cost of restructuring that plant. That's what a provision is. And of course, to fund that provision, to fund that restructuring, we'd have to take out some debt. So here are, here are some of the ones that you might see regularly deducted when somebody's going from enterprise value to shares value. Pension liabilities, provisions, sometimes another liability which is called deferred tax, which you don't need to worry about too much. So those are some examples. The point for you, really, you can think of enterprise value and debt-free, cash-free value as being the same, but just store it in the back of your mind. If you find a banker talking about enterprise value, he will be looking to deduct a few more debt-like liabilities moving from left to right. And if you're advising a seller, that could impact on what they get there. Remember my lawyer friend from Austria? That's what he had seen happen. Bankers start with a great big enterprise value, Whittle that down, not only by subtracting net debt, but subtracting things like pension liabilities, 
provisions, deferred tax, and I could subtract some of the things that you guys are talking about as well. All right, that's the difference between enterprise value and debt-free cash free value. Are we, uh, do you think we are up for another exam question? I don't think we even need to talk about this one. All right, we're on exam question 10. Okay, so we've done eight. We're jumping around a little bit. Ten. Link leaders at the back there. Debt free, cash free, enterprise value. Are they exactly the same? Pardon? No, they're not. Carmen, do they both value the business before it is divided up between the banks and the shareholders? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Uh, somewhat imprecise terms that can be applied dif differently by different practitioners. Different people will subtract different liabilities going from left to right. So that's true. <coughs> Differ to the, in the extent in which they account for certain liabilities. That's true. Are broadly the same. Lawyers, I'm asking you to think about them as being broadly the same. That's true. Which one of those is false? Which is false? Exactly, exactly the same. Exactly right. You are exactly right. Okay, they are not exactly the same. They're broadly the same. Both measures of value. Slightly different liability. Gosh, you guys are learning a lot about valuation. You've got George to thank for that. So. What